So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some sports psychology stuff today. I know some of you are like, why does that matter? Mm -hmm. But I was reading an article by uh, Angela Duckworth, and she's one of the leading researchers in the area of grit and the, and the way that grit um, is relevant to success and how, how having grit creates success. And that's true across the board from you know, sports to business to life in general to your diet and your health. Grit matters. And so grit is the ability to keep going even when you're not getting uh, feedback that it's working and the ability to continue trying. Um, we hear entrepreneurs talk about that, mm -hmm. the ability to just keep plowing ahead even when things look like they're not being successful. Um, you hear athletes talk about it all the time. If you listen to athletes, athletes definitely have that mentality, that grit mentality. And so I wanted to share just a few tips. Hey, good morning, Allison. Morning, Allison. A few tips from the space of sports psychology and grit research that you might be able to apply in changing your diet and sticking to a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I you, think we have grit. We, well, we're both competitive, former competitive athletes. Right. Entrepreneurs, so that's, yeah, we're athletes, entrepreneurs, yeah, we're entrepreneurs, we're former competitive athletes. So yes. it's not surprising at all that we would have grit. No. Sometimes just, it's annoying, but yes. It is sometimes annoying. But yeah, we definitely do. And it is, it, it, it's interesting that grit isn't something you have to have yourself. I mean, it's helpful if you have it yourself. But you, if you have someone in your life who has grit, you can kind of use their grit to your advantage. So I know when I, when I work with clients, they'll often like lean on my grit because they use it, the um, accountability and the yes, you can do this and that whole idea of it, my grit helps them succeed. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone in your life who has grit, you can use that to help with your success and it doesn't harm them for you to do that. Like it's not like grit comes in a bucket and there's only so much of it. If, if someone believes in you, their grit can rub off on you and be, be helpful to you. So that's, that's always good to know. The other thing that's interesting about people who succeed at things and who use grit to succeed at things is that they tend to see their goals as a direction and something they're working toward and that excites them. So people who don't have grit or who don't use that mentality see a goal that they're trying to achieve as something that's far away and it's hard and they Impossible, can't do yeah. it. And, uh, it's so, you know, they're, they're having to like struggle. Whereas someone who has grit sees it as, oh, here's this goal. Let me go march over there and, and figure out how to get there. So it's a little bit different way of looking at it. And so people who have grit view their goals that they're working to achieve as creating meaning in their life. So it gives them the ability to think about something that they, they're working toward, but they haven't achieved yet as, as exciting and fun. Whereas people who don't have grit see it as, something that holds them down, it makes them feel bad, they're frustrated, and, and so being able to change that mentality and the way you think about your goals can help you um, develop more grit because you'll see it as something that you're, you know, you're determined and you have a direction and you know where you're going. I mean, you hear that in, with entrepreneurs. All the time. All yeah. the time where they feel like, I have this direction and I'm going in that direction and that's what I'm doing, and they, but they don't feel like if they realize that that direction is slightly off, or not working quite, quite right, they don't like get stuck in that and they have to do it because, oh, I'm stuck in this direction. They're more than happy to pivot. So people who have grit have this interesting ability to go in a direction and when they realize that direction isn't exactly where they wanna be, they can pivot. And that's what I you know, suggest with people when they're working toward their health and their diet yeah. is you know, if you've been doing something, you know, whatever style of health you've tried to do, whether you know, working out or you know, diet style fad or whatever, diet. fad diet, yeah. whatever, if it's not working for you, don't get stuck in that. Don't feel like, well, I have to have grit. I'm just going to power mm -hmm. through this. If it's not working, you have to pivot. I think so. I think people get stuck too because they'll tell somebody, I'm doing X diet. Uh -huh. uh, and then they don't want to sit there, oh, well, that didn't work. I want to try other X diet. Instead, they just they just keep trying to do that diet and they keep failing at it. Right. You know, when what you really need to do is say, okay, that particular system doesn't work for me. Let me see if this one over here does. Because the goal is health. Right, and it might be losing weight. It might be you know just better shape. It might be longevity, know, longevity, whatever it is. But that's the goal. The diet's not the goal. Right, right? it's how you get there. It's, and I, I think too the other thing that you'll find both with entrepreneurs and with athletes that I think that we can apply here in the health space is that they don't just randomly try things. Like they they make 
And I have an entrepreneur friend that I have worked with um, on both as an entrepreneur, as a, I've worked with her as an executive coach and a speaker coach, and I've also worked with her as a diet coach. And she says all the time that she takes calculated risks. So they're not just jumping into things and trying things, they're actually doing the research, figuring it out, asking the questions, and then going into it and giving it, giving it a go. So determination and direction. Also, the other thing too that, that people who you know, are, are have grit realize is that big successes are a collection of mundane tasks. Right. You know, you don't ever see an athlete who the only thing they do, like let's use football for example, um, they don't just show up on Sunday and play a game. Like that's not how no. being successful works. They go to practice and they watch videos and they have conversations with their coaches and you know, they have all these little mundane things that they do that no one sees so that they can show up and succeed on Sundays. Correct, yeah. So your health and your diet is the same thing. It's a whole bunch of mundane, uninteresting, they seemingly not even relevant decisions and conversations and choices. And I think that a lot of people get lost in that where they, they want it to be this big, huge thing. Yeah. Everything's gotta be a big event. Everything has to be a big event. And that, I mean, we've definitely been taught that, you know, by the food energy in, industry and by our culture, that things have to be big and interesting and exciting or they're not worth doing. And that's just, that's not life. That's not mm -hmm. the way things really work. And so we have to kind of change the way we think about that. And those of us who have grit and those of us who, who use our grit to coach other people to have grit, kind of teach that you can move a mountain with a teaspoon. It just takes you a long time. Right. But if you're consistent and you're, you, know, you do it regularly, you'll get there. And I've said that about my workouts. I don't do crazy, strenuous, nutty workouts. I just don't. But I go consistently. I'm there every day doing my little thing. And you guys hear me, you know, I talk about it. I'm like, yeah, I did a workout. <laughs> it wasn't very exciting, but I did a workout. And so being able to accept the kind of the mundane aspect of success is part of grit to be able to say, I'm going to just keep going forward. That's something we can definitely, good morning, definitely Deborah. take. Hey, Deborah, it's good to see you. Yes. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that there's a couple of different ways that you can look at success. One is that you can look at talent plus, if, plus effort. So if you have a talent plus effort, that'll give you a skill. Um, and if you, have, uh, if you already have a skill, you can add effort and then you get achievement. But what if you don't have talent to begin with? What, what if you don't have that progression? Well, then you can just you can add knowledge plus effort because knowledge plus effort is going to lead to um, skill and then that skill is going to lead to add, adding effort and achieving. Which is, you know, a lot of what we're doing for people is we're giving them the knowledge and right. even with our master class, I mean, that's knowledge you have um, consistently at right. your fingertips all the time. Yeah. Exactly. And so a lot of people feel like you, you, they have to have talent or they can't achieve, or they already have to have grit or they can't achieve. And that's not true. The human brain is really good at taking knowledge. And if you add effort, you end up with a skill. And then once you have that skill, you can add effort. Notice that both of them have effort. Yes. And then you end up with achievement. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be true whether you're you know, an entrepreneur or you're an athlete or you're trying to you know, be better with your health. Anything that's worth achieving has that pattern to it. And that, that's why so much of my sports psychology background ends up relevant if I'm coaching you know, someone, an executive, or I'm coaching someone on their diet, because achievement is the same regardless. Right. So um, again, back to grit, I wanted to mention grit. Again, the ability for, of grit is getting up every day and just doing it. Um, I decided um, over th right before Thanksgiving that I was going to start getting up earlier and I was going to start doing some Tai Chi and making sure that I meditated every day because I was finding that I wasn't meditating um, like I wanted to and I, hadn't, I, I had this idea that I wanted to do Tai Chi but I wasn't doing it. So ever since the Monday after Thanksgiving, I have gotten up every day, every, morning. every single day, a little bit earlier so that I could do those two things. And I committed to it. And now I, now it's something that it's like I look forward to because it's like I have this. And we've talked about creating a chain where you do it and then you have a pattern of doing it and then you don't want to break your chain so you mm -hmm. can, can you continue doing it. And that's, that's grit. Just you know, do it. Another thing that they find is really helpful is that if you write down your goals, which you've probably heard, write down your goals. And when people write down goals, they'll often write down like 20 or 30 goals. Organize them into your top 
three to five and then ignore everything else because everything else is going to be a distraction right. from your main goal. If you're trying to achieve too many things, you achieve nothing. Right. Yes. The, the word priority was a singular word. It's a singular thing. You had a priority for many, many years. It wasn't, I, I can't remember exactly. I want to say it was a hundred years ago, but I could be off on that number that priorities became a word that there never used to be such a word. There never used to be something where you would have multiple things going on. So that's something to consider um, as well. So pick your top three to five things and, and then use your grit toward that. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Now let me see, what else do I have here? Um, give up your low level goals in, in support is, of your higher true. level yeah. goals. That right. makes sense. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, be specific about what you're trying to achieve. That, that's, a, that's another thing you hear in, you know, in the entrepreneur space and the athlete space that we can definitely learn from and use in the health space. Health and longevity. Is, you know, what are you trying to achieve? Know what that looks like. And that'll help you uh, have grit toward achieving mm -hmm. that. So let's see. What else do I have here? Interest plus practice plus purpose plus hope equals success. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's, you know, that's a really good point, too, is you have to believe you can or you're not going to have grit. You're not going to want to do it. You're mm -hmm. not going to want to put forth the effort. You know, it used to be, um, the old saying used to be pick yourself up by your bootstraps, right? I mean, yeah, you have to, you have to, I hate to use the word have to, the ability to pick yourself up, you know, because not everything's going to be a success, right? You're going to have ups and downs and dieting and whatever. Um, but just to get back on the horse or, oh God, I got every cliche in the book. I'm throwing every <laughs> cliche them, yes. that I can think of to you guys. Sorry. But uh, it, it, the point there is that just keep going, keep moving forward, keep that path. You know, um, sometimes you don't, it'll halt you or something, but just keep going forward. Well, and it's also important to recognize that trying to do something you can't do yet is frustrating. And I think a lot of times people um, give up on something because they don't want to have to get through that. I can give you an example from my own life. When I was in eighth grade, my dad took me with his high school uh, jazz band to a jazz festival. And one of the evenings, they all went out bowling. And I had never bowled in my life. But, you know, I figured I would try it. I was horrible. Mm. I was absolutely horrible. And the high school kids made fun of me, which was just devastating to me. I have not bowled since, not even once. And that is an example of un being unwilling to deal with the frustration of being new and not being good at something. And so I, maybe I'd be a great bowler. I have no idea because I never tried. I allowed that one thing as you know, an eighth grader where kids made fun of me because I was not good at bowling to completely eliminate ever I mean when people say oh yeah I bowl for fun I'm like that sounds horrible <laughs> like there's a part of my brain that still is that little eighth grade girl who got teased for not being able to bowl and so you have to be able to accept that doing something new trying something different and whether it's you know being an athlete or being an entrepreneur or working in a new job or trying to change your diet it's going to be frustrating and when you accept that and you're just like, oh, yeah, look, there's the frustration. Sure enough, that's annoying. And then, but then you can move on. Right. That's going to help with your, with your grit and your ability to continue trying. Because just because you're bad at something to start with doesn't mean you'll always be bad at it. That's it. There's a saying in the sports world that um, someday what's so hard for you now will be your warm-up. And I, I've had that happen. Um, as, as a competitive volleyball player, I've had it happen where something that I remembered being really, really challenging, suddenly I, you know, I realized, oh wow, I used to think this was hard and now I do it as part of my warm up. So it, that's definitely, we found that in the way that we eat. When we first started this oh, yeah, way, I mean, it was hard. And but, fasting, although yeah. sometimes we have our ups and downs on yeah. fasting. Today's a fasting day. We're yes. not so pleased with that today. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, everything that we've done moving into this, this new lifestyle that we have, uh, for almost what two years now it seems mm -hmm. um, is not been an easy step it's not been just like today tomorrow's different it's been a process it's been you know keep trying keep moving forward but, and, and for us it was also a lot about education too what can we learn because the more we knew the easier it was for us to do the right thing because the more harm we saw from other things the less we wanted right knowledge knowledge is definitely relevant so mm -hmm. de definitely something to think about and then make sure that you're recognizing your successes and feel that thrill. So as frustrating as it is to do something that you're not used to doing and that is hard for you, when you do succeed, 
recognize that. And that's something I have never been very good at. I have to remind myself on a regular basis to celebrate my successes. I've definitely been that person that's like, okay, check that box, got that done, next goal. And I, I had to learn to really say, I did that and that's awesome and good for me. And even like, so when I did my TEDx talk, I decided I wanted to reward myself with something physical that I could remember I did a TEDx talk and that is an impressive thing. And I can say that without being proud or gloating or you know any of those obnoxious things just to say, I did a TEDx talk, that's impressive. And so I bought myself, I don't, you probably have seen them, the birch, the, the little fake birch trees that have little lights on them. Um, their little LED lights. I've always wanted one. And so as a reward for me, when I finished my TEDx talk, when I did it, I bought one of those and it's here in our house. And when I turn it on, I always am like, yep, that's because I did a TEDx talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Valerie. Morning, Valerie. I'm learning to do a flip. That's impressive. That's impressive, yeah. I would, uh, I would, I can't do those. I get water in my nose. Yeah. So I just touch and go. So that's impressive. Good job. Let us know when you succeed. Definitely yes. make sure you say, I did it, when you, when you uh, succeed at learning to do that. Um, be willing to create time to create to allow full concentration on whatever you're trying to accomplish. Don't try to do it um, as, just as a side thing or whatever. If you focus on something, you achieve it. If you don't focus on it, you won't. Pretty simple. Um, get good feedback. That's, you know... Well, that's an interesting... <sighs> Because it's, it's, as I'm sure everybody's experienced, it's, it's much easier to get bad feedback than it is to get good feedback. It's easy for people to be critical. It's right. hard for people to give good right. feedback. And to me, critical feedback or, or bad feedback is even the people that, they, that are along the lines of, don't try because, you know, we don't want you to fail. You know, that, that, that concern, that, that false concern on yeah. thought. And when it's really other people's insecurities that they're, you know, putting onto you. So... Yeah, but as someone who's been a coach for so many years of my life, you know, in sports, in business, in life, in, in health, feedback is just key. Like yeah. getting good feedback from someone who can say, okay, so this worked. And, and not e they may not even give you feedback. They may help you find your own feedback. I, I tell people all the time, a lot of times it's not my job to give you answers. It's my job to ask you questions because mm -hmm. that's what gives you the information right. you need to move forward. And I, I think I'm, a, I'm more along as a self-motivator. Um, well, just, you're more introverted too. I am more introverted. Yeah. Um, but throughout my life, when, when I was bodybuilding, when I was playing football, I was the one that always was like, you know, yes, I'm going to do this when... And I've said this to you before, where my family was more like, don't try because you're going to fail. Even when I went back to school and got my degree, I had negative enforcement, enforcement, enforcement yeah. not positive. Yeah. You know, so. And, and that you have to be able to um, ignore that too, the outside noise. And you'll definitely get that in, in your health and longevity mm -hmm. journey is you're going to get a lot of outside noise of you know, I've said it before that as soon as you tell people that you want to eat plant-based, everyone suddenly has, you know, a degree in biochemistry yes. Yes. And, and, nutrition. and nutrition and wants to tell you why you're wrong. So you have to be able to, to ignore that. So the thing in, in sports is repetition, reflection, refinement. So do it, do it repeatedly, reflect on what's working and not working, refine it, and then do it again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, and that's going to be the same thing with your diet every single day. Look at what's working, continue doing that. Look at what's not working and tweak it. So um, shame and embarrassment are not going to help you uh, get better. I find that for a lot of people who are you know, new or feel like they, they're not, new is not the right word, but they've been on a diet journey for a really long time and they haven't succeeded as much as they'd like to, um, they feel shame and embarrassment about it and they don't want to try again. Shame and embarrassment are not helpful when it comes to um, achievement. And so that's something that you can work through. And obviously I'm gonna recommend that you work through with a coach or a therapist. It's the easiest, fastest way to make it happen. I see so many people who are like, I can do it myself. And I meet them five years later and they're still doing it themselves and they're in the same place. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing Cheap with- Cheap endorsement, she's a coach. And a therapist. Well, yes, I guess technically yeah, a therapist. Yeah, and a therapist, yes, right. definitely qualified. So, Although I'm not, so ther a therapist will let you come and complain about the same thing over and over and over and just listen to you. For me, because I'm a coach, if you complain about the same thing three times and you're not changing it, I'm going to ride you about it. Because, yeah. all right, you've complained about it three times. You obviously don't like it. Let's do something. Let's not just complain. Right. So um, that's the one caveat I have about not being a therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, contribute to the well-being uh, um, 
make those goals. And again, grit is a huge part of it. And you can lean on other people who have grit to help you because they're, a bit, and that's kind of why we do this because we have grit. So we share it with you every day. We're like, hey, look at what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Check it out. You can come along. And that's kind of our goal. And I've been talking for 20 minutes about I know, grit. I'm How watching. exciting is I'm that? Like, yes. But if you want to read about grit, um, again, I'll say it again. I said at the beginning, Angela Duckworth is, is a great researcher in the space of grit. Um, and so she has some really interesting articles and stuff out there that you can uh, you can do Google Google her, Angela you Duckworth. You can put it on. You can put that article on our uh, community page. Yeah, yeah I can. I'll, 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 she may have a TEDx talk, so I'll look. I'll see what I can find that I think would be really good for you guys to read. Okay. And that's at rnrjourney.com. If you didn't get my newsletter or if you got it but didn't read it, I highly recommend you do. We've been getting a lot of great feedback on it. The one that I sent out yesterday was on self-sabotage. So if you, um, again, which is kind of along the same lines mm -hmm. of grit, so that might be of interest to you. So go um, read that if you haven't opened it. That was a really good one because we had people making comments to her today as she was walking by. Thanks for the article. That yeah, was awesome. in the gym, people yeah. were like, oh, I read it. That was really good. Right. So. And I got some emails, so definitely if you haven't read the article yesterday, uh, go and do that. If you're not on our newsletter, you should be. You can go to rnrjourney.com and uh, get on the newsletter as well. And of course, our webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. Make sure you like and share. And when you like and share, make sure you also go to notifications and select all posts. Um, because Facebook's mean and they won't let you see it unless you tell them you absolutely want to see it. I know there's some of you on there. Like it. Yes. Give me a thumbs up. Exactly. I work hard here, people. Give me a thumbs up. It's not hard. Push the button. Right, exactly. All right. I think that's all I've got for them. That's it? Yeah, 23 minutes later. I'll tell you, it's a long Oof. one today. It's a long one today. All right, so with that, we will say, eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.